So, we are finally here with the Halloween franchise. Again, first we're doing this. Kinda nervous, kinda excited doing this, but you know, here it goes. We're finally starting the 21st. God, I don't know what day it is. 21st, okay? Even though I'm not recording at the 21st. But anyways, John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween. The one, the only, the classic Halloween. I think he'll come back. <laughs> Halloween, the night he came home. Rated R. It's a classic. Clearly is. It's super well known. Around Halloween time, usually people watch this and, you know, it laid the foundation for the slasher genre and it really revitalized the genre. Well, I'm not, I don't think revitalized the right word, but, but definitely laid the foundations for like basically any and every slasher. You know, you have the final girl, you have the, the stalker or the guy or who whatever is killing people. There's bound to be blood, which is funny because Halloween barely has any blood. It's all been on suspense and John Carpenter's music, which is great. His music again the iconic one two three one two three one two one two three you know that, that's all him another thing i want to do which is what i probably should have done for like the last 20 movies but i was too lazy and i like binge watch and marathon a bunch like at least the first half of movies because some of them i haven't seen yet but just to i don't know look up some facts and like behind the scenes stuff that most of y'all should know because i don't i don't know what else to say about this movie other than it's a classic because a lot of people a lot of youtubers and movie goers have talked about this already like a bunch of times very in-depth so I i'm not sure what to say but you know behind the scenes stuff i'm just look at some things up because i don't know but look up things that i find interesting basically so apparently it took less than two weeks to write the script which is insane in today's standard apparently the movie was supposed to be originally called the babysitting murderers which is why jamie lee curtis is a babysitter babysitting tommy doyle but then a, a producer was like you know what let's have let's call the movie rerun a specific holiday which is why it changed to halloween so the babysitter murderers it, it would have sound to me at least like a generic slasher definitely a, like a standout movie if it wasn't still called halloween but obviously got you to halloween which is great this was jamie lee curtis's first future debut who by the way is the daughter of the psycho lady in the bathroom the the iconic bathroom scene from, from psycho the woman who gets killed in there that's her mother halloween's production was supposedly incredibly short it was a 20-day shoot in the spring of 1978 and then released in october of the same year which is sounds like crazy crunch time stuff honestly a lot of restrictions a lot of just stressful things <laughs> like it's not a really stressful they even brought dozen bags of like fake leaves because they didn't shoot this in obviously in illinois had not feel illinois they shot this in south pasadena and hollywood california which you know all, all the houses all the all the, the the neighborhoods that you see all in california south pasadena the mask the iconic mask which was a william shatner mask just turned around and painted white and messing up the hair or whatnot or whatever apparently the script didn't call for any specific kind of mask Mask. however they needed a mask i don't know if it's the best mask it's definitely good looking i, I don't know because i do like some of the other masks i like them just a, t a bit better but it is you know very iconic very white and blank face no emotion which makes sense for michael myers oh this is interesting most of the main cast has provided their own like clothing and wardrobe apparently jamie lee curtis brought her own costumes from jc penny was apparently under just a hundred dollars so yeah this this movie was very low budget and again when you have a low budget any like the producers and director and everyone involved with this movie they have to be creative now sometimes that doesn't go well like most mid-2000s low budget movies but in this case they use the creativity and created you know stuff you know stuff like this bringing their own their own clothing and whatnot I actually didn't know this myers was played by three different actors it was also played by nick castle obviously which i'm assuming was he played most of it and then it was also played by tommy lee wallace which he would work on i think the second one or third one i'm not sure and then another actor named tony moran appear in guest spots throughout the whole well not guest spots would just appear or be myers throughout the movie but uh, you know doing some more research and digging like some people theorizing or i think or like, i don't know if it's theories or confirmed or whatnot but john carpenter at one, one point played myers at one point i i do know that what was her name oh god oh god oh no oh no i'm like forgetting things Oh no, uh, Deborah Hill. Sorry, forgot her name for a moment. Deborah Hill played like the, uh, the hand.
hand of Little Myers at the beginning where he kills his sister. So that, again, the super low budget made a classic out of it, miraculously. Oh, and obviously everyone knows this. The house was relocated in the 80s. Everyone knows about this. If you live in a South Pasadena area or anywhere close near that area of California or South Pasadena, you will know apartments were shut down and get rid of the house. But some other person was like, you know what? I w let me keep the house. Let me relocate it. It's near, it's near like these set of trains and that apartments complexes replaced the original spot. And then, oh, apparently at the time we shooting, the house was really abandoned. Wait a minute. So that mean did they have to build sets? For young miners or did they just be hmm, that's interesting they were probably allowed to repaint the the building and do stuff to the the house because it was abandoned i don't i mean they would have i mean it was su super low budget so they would have to use that actual house right not sure about that and then the score carpenter completed the entire score all by himself in just three days was it perhaps or was it wasn't there a guy that helped him probably had like an assist or something just helping him but yeah three days insane again time crunch right shot in spring came out halloween that same year spring starts around I don't know. God, so, like in, in April or something, March, April. You have April, May, June, July, September. That's like six, seven months of time crunch right there. M maybe movies back then were, were made differently, but again, this was super low budget. It wasn't like a high budget film that took, that would have been shot and it would have taken a year to, you know, do post-production, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it did take that long or take that, that short. And then last one, that's, oh God, I'm already recording it for 10 minutes, too long. Apparently Carpenter filmed new scenes after the fact. Apparently they needed to fill a two hour time slot, DD4, television broadcast as a Halloween. So he filmed additional scenes during the production of Halloween 2. You know, future Donald Pleasance playing Dr. Loomis and Jimmy Lee Curtis playing Laurie Strode and just them talking. You know, just, I don't know, this is uh, Loomis at the hearing to review young Michael at a insane asylum, confronting young Michael in his room, discovering... Oh, okay then. That makes sense. Just discovering, he, he like scraped walls of the word sister, which is not supposed to be in this movie, but whatever. Just, I want to see that cut actually. So there's a, a completely different cut is what they're trying to say the tv cuts of halloween where there's additional scenes of young michael's carvey and sister which i mean everyone knows this but it would be revealed in the sequel not this movie because it seems like he just stalks this babysitter or this random girl did not know that i want to is there i want to look up to the halloween 1970 tv cut interesting interesting now let's get to the actual film we, we get to that show of uh, young myers killing his own sister and then taking that mask off when their parents get home hey, i have that opening which is not the best opening there's the, uh, some of the openings for the, for these movies look pretty cool this one is iconic or not iconic well it is iconic but it's just like the pumpkin head lighting up all the names producers executives with the iconic theme and it'll be cut to 15 years later where we meet jamie lee curtis she is the so i like this character i like jamie lee curtis's laurie strode however she does feel like the typical like normal good girl final girl which isn't a bad thing but later i will talk about why i like different iterations of laurie strode that may or may not piss some people off but anyways she meets uh tommy door little boy so she's gonna have the babysit later on she goes to the house that myros was at apparently he, he made it there because we also meet this character named dr loomis who by the way is i can see why people like dr loomis he is a very simple character but also very just he's so set on finding out and killing michael myers this little boy that he met years ago 15 years ago trying to get him to talk to him but all he saw was like these dark black eyes and evil within this boy and he's that character that no one listens to basically and you know i can see why a lot of halloween fans gravitate towards him because he's basically kind of us right this boy this guy is evil please just kill him he's doing that throughout the whole movie and you know the cops in passing not passing it hattonfield were like nah you're crazy loomis you know and he's just that character so I get why people love him. I like him too a lot actually. And it's mainly because of Donald Pleasance. He he plays the character perfectly. And he would go on to do more, you know, John Carpenter films like The Fog or I think some other movie I'm forgetting about, but he's awesome. Again, this is a Jamie Lee Curtis first debut, like on screen, big screen. So I, I could see why she's very like she's not there yet, right? She's not the Laurie Strode or, or Jamie Lee Curtis that we other other films and then later in the, in this injuries. But you know, Myers is at the house. He, he, oh yeah, he escapes because Loomis is trying to like try for him to somewhere else he escapes drives the car he gets to his house which oh by the way how would he know about or learn about driving he was six years old in 63 right and how do you learn to drive that's you know what it's just kind of like movie magic stuff don't worry about that that's, that's you know stupid nitpicking but which it is it is stupid nit nitpicking but if he was driving at the and then 15 years later he would have been 21 he must have been driving really recklessly and getting in a car accidents because boy i don't know how you do that but anyways forget about that he sees laurie strode and decides to stalk the shit out of her follows her through school follows her through her house 
she starts seeing him and well, she's on the second floor of her house starts seeing him seeing him and you know on first floor or whatever she sees him the the bush scene the iconic bush where he see he's on the side of the bush she sees him he magically just goes away it's as if he has supernatural abilities which they never state that he has supernatural abilities but he kind of does right because he's at face value he seems like a normal guy like a normal person right but there's this thing that imply that he's supernatural and it's like just just choose a side <laughs> like choose a bloody side you know like i don't think they ever do okay maybe they do in later sequels but i don't know i don't know about that one again dr loomis is on the run he but we also see how he gets his iconic work overall thing where he like kills a mechanic and then he's in a butcher's aside and dr loomis finds him there's multiple times where they cross paths right at the mask store a mask is stolen that's how myers gets his mask and you know loomis is just there but myers within the car drives past him and loomis just so happens not to turn his way stuff like that it's like damn it you're getting close man just look the other way one thing i do like that is consistent throughout the whole series is him looming in the background there's shots and I, I think most of the movies right maybe in every movie where he's like doing something in the background or you see him in the background of a door and then whoever's talking it in front of camera doesn't see them you see him in one shot pans away pans back and he's gone stuff like that i like it's creepy building tension and that's has stayed consistent throughout the whole series oh yeah i guess i gotta i gotta mention this the the pumpkin sitting scene that spot and wherever south pa south pasadena is in the house has just become a iconic tourist place where halloween fans they just go there it's actually a pumpkin on site so the person living in that house is obviously embracing the fact that this place is where jamie Emily Curtis sat on and had her big ass pumpkin. That's cool. That's cool of the the owner of the house. But that's so like you know people just sitting here taking pictures, seen all over Instagram and Twitter and even on YouTube. That was cool. I'd like to go there. I'm only like three four hours away. Please, I want to go there. Please. Obviously with COVID and everything right now, can't do much. I, mean, I can, but I ain't trying to get sick. Oh, one thing I, f I forgot to mention about the mask, the big black eyes. That's really cool. I don't know how they. I mean, I know how they did it, but not only was the mask white and plain, so there's no emotions, but there's these dark eyes dark aisles you don't see his eyes really cool again super cheap mask willem shatner like star trek mask or whatever and then with a little adjusting and editing and whatever made it look very iconic to upon generations for decades you know so I, I like that there's some iterations where it shows eyes you know h2o resurrection but and that's what the, the new movie got right the the mask looks pretty cool pretty similar in, in in ways and then the killing begins right where i think he kills her friend does she i think i think myers kills her friend her boyfriend where they're like having sex obviously they gotta have that right the horny couple the only i think this is where he stabs the one guy next to the wall and, and oh yeah he, he stabs this one guy with the knife stabs him to the wall which gravity which doesn't make sense it's you know gravity but whatever it's still a cool shot of him stabbing him to this wall or, or door and looking very curious and being surprised too at the fact that he's able to do this as if he's like enjoying it and thinking oh wow i'm evil you know stuff like that is like this is cool this is really cool uh, oh just a disclaimer i forgot to mention this out of the big three icons right horror icons halloween michael myers freddy cougar number number street and chase of horrors friday the 13th freddy is my favorite friday the 13th halloween you know uh they don't excite me as much as freddy cougar does i can still acknowledge that there have been you know there's some great movies in some of these not so much of friday the 13th but halloween specifically some really good movies oh for some reason they even bring the fact that he did his sister's grave judith myers puts it on a bed he kills this other girl with the iconic uh, ghost sheet scene kills her again not very bloody right so when you hear when you think of slashers you think i was gonna be very bloody but no again very low budget so they had to cut corners and just kill people with the magic of editing and movie magic myers kills one of laurie strode's friend while they're on the phone she thinks this is where she goes through the house she finds all the dead bodies she goes back right she well i think she she could stab in the arm i think she runs back to tommy door's house crying for help and oh yeah just speaking of tommy he sees myers out in the house and then there's obviously th these lights on the ground lighting up the house across from his street and myers is standing there that looked cool as well right lighting it up as a shadow or, or the shape as they call him the shape really cool stuff really cool like lighting and setting stuff so obviously he almost gets close to her and, and killing her tommy Doyle gets her and he tells the kids to go hide or whatever then we get the iconic again closet shot that's been used in trailers and ads and and tv I remember uh, AMC, they have this thing. I think it's on right now. I don't have cable no more because who the hell pays for cable? But there's this this scene, right? He's going in the closet and trying to stab her. That's been using ads and on the AMC show, cable channel that I used to watch on. Where they would air every Halloween movie and other horror stuff on the channel. Which is where I got this idea from. But obviously, you know, other people have done it on the YouTube space. So just want to do my own but we get that she get, she gets out of it eventually he you know misses her she goes does she go to i think she goes to another house wait hold on 
I forgot if she went to another if she went to another house or not. I could be forgetting and messing up right now. Anyways, that doesn't matter, right? There's at some points where she thinks she like get she got him, right? And he wakes back up like the, the goddamn Undertaker, like sits up, looks at her, he almost gets her, right? Now I believe this is where Loomis comes in, right? No, the other cops. And the kids start going to him. He's like, What's wrong? What's wrong? He obviously knows what's up goes to the house starts shooting him oh and then the mask comes off played by i believe the third actor i believe or maybe was it nick castle or in the comments let me know <laughs> okay I, I don't know my actors very well only or uh, my little circle but whoever that actor was his he did show his face and then he puts the mask back on and that's where luma shoots him he falls off the balcony and then laurie's like was that the boogeyman which is sort of set throughout the movie right tarando is like i'm scared of the boogeyman and even at school he gets bullied by these kids saying boogeyman's gonna get you and that again is being brought back up was that the boogeyman ian loomis is like yep or not yet but like so something along the line of something much worse or basically yep yes and then loomis goes check out he's gone there's a imprint of his body on the grass but he's gone and then you hear heavy breathing you know just breathing and breathing and breathing and then that's how the movie ends left on a cliffhanger not knowing if it's left on a cliffhanger knowing the fact that he's still out there somewhere which is would have been a good end honestly would have been a good way to end the series just him again le leaving it on a cliffhanger and leading on to the unknown he's still gonna be out there killing and basically babysitters or whatnot so yeah i mean i kind of said what most people would have said about this movie it's classic what the hell do i have to say about it it's still really good it, it is a bit i won't lie it is a bit slow in today's standard which is not a bad thing but i, I could definitely see people saying like oh the movie's kind of slow and it, it, it is it, it's a very slow burn not very slow but it, it's it's a slow burn leading up to like tension building not like fake loud sounds like in conjure universe or like modern horror movies right just loud noise you get ooh jump scare there's none of that there's actual scary like scenes and tension building and just i guess ex exposition stuff's being said and left to the audience's own imagination so you know it's not one of you know, again it's not one of those movies but i wouldn't say this is just me personally i wouldn't say it would be great i'm sorry it's it is still really good though don't know if i say it was great now that doesn't mean the movie the movie is great but just me personally i do think it's just it's just really good movie still classic movie is still really good next is going to be halloween 2 in 1981 the sequel obviously they made a sequel because who the hell was the company of this movie i forgot was it universal distributing these movies were like hey we want more sequels we want another movie because they made money obviously you know there was some uh, reluctance from carpenter and Deborah, but we'll talk about that in halloween 2 on day 22nd